Hello. Uh, you would like to play along with you today? Oh, uh, what do you know what? We say that today, when I like to use the thesis proposition one. Then use the thesis proposition. Yay! I like to play the thesis proposition. Oh, you want to say something? Then bring the sun. Like, Pumping is the city of water. So it's not just our capital city, but our country as a whole. Because we exist in the lower Mekong Basin, so that means we are prone to flooding. We're flooded annually. <laughs> the other interesting thing is, um, urbanization in Phnom Penh has always been about land reclamation since its creation. So, um, like this one. I think people in architecture and urbanism in Cambodia is very familiar with this, this picture. So it's like. We have always reclaimed like wetlands and natural ponds for development, even before the time of French protectorate. So yeah, even in contemporary urbanization, um, the city's development was largely driven by private developers who purchased public spaces like green spaces and wetland and peri urban areas that function as natural reservoirs or retention ponds and natural wastewater treatment and turn them into construction sites so basically they're transforming like porous surfaces that has ecological function into impervious surfaces that serves no ecological function and that poses a major problem because Phnom Penh has one rely heavily on great infrastructure to evacuate wastewater and rain and flood water out of the city. That worked in the past because we had numerous wetlands to serve as um, retention ponds and wastewater treatment um, system. But now, because we keep on reclaiming these natural water system services, we can no longer rely on great infrastructure so effectively and we definitely cannot rely on like wetlands and ponds as water retention ponds or as water treatment because they don't exist anymore so we're basically screwed <laughs> is what i'm saying and instead of like uh, investing in a more dynamic and resilient water sensitive design approaches or green infrastructure the government chose to invest in uh, a robust and singular great infrastructure which i already established is not effective i'm not saying that it's wrong i'm just saying that it's not sufficient to handle the level of water hazard that we are facing now and that is the problem we see water related problem as a hazard i mean water related problems are a hazard but we don't have to necessarily look at water as a hazard we can see it as a resource for urbanization because to me i've always believed that water is a like a powerful tool that has a lot of potential for economic and social cultural development as well as environmental conservation so i really do believe that like in low-lying cities like Phnom Penh, it's crucial to incorporate water into urbanization so my study focus is in peri-urban area i want to focus on satellite city specifically because there is there's been a tremendous like interest in satellite cities in southeast asia in general but also because like satellite cities have been flourishing like tremendously in cambodia in general so like after um the online meeting sensei was okay with me um investigating into peri urban area but he told me, like he asked me what I define as peri-urban. So I know I have to define what peri-urban area is and why it's important, what's its function, like how peri-urbanization is done. So I'll just show you guys my 
notes <laughs> here. Oh yeah, that's like, these are the important things that I can think of that I need to do. What is peri-urbanization in satellite cities? Because I still do want to research on that. And what are sense of urban design in general? And the government here, because I want to, like, my target audience is um, practitioners, obviously, but also the government. Um, because I found some interesting um, documents on the government's policy when it comes to satellite cities and private development in general. And also I need to come up with a hypothesis. So yeah, that was my thesis proposition. Um, I'm going to have to do a lot more further reading and investigation into peri-urban areas and into case studies in Delta region cities and um, yeah I hope you guys sticked around until the end of the video <laughs> even though it was so chaotic and so spontaneous um, I'll I'll make a list of all the relevant documents that I read for the thesis proposition and some further readings that I'm going to do like some papers and books that I'm going to be reading for like in order to write my next thesis proposition and um, I apologize for <laughs> for speaking in English again but it's a language that I'm more comfortable with because I've been speaking it and reading exclusively in it for the past year and uh, yeah I'll, I'll try much harder to speak in Khmer in the next video but I, I can't promise anything but yeah I'm, I'm sorry guys I'll try to add like subtitles and if like you have any question you can always text me or email me or whatever like I'm super game about sharing what I learn I'm just not very articulate about it so yeah bye see you guys next time